I am pleased to be able to present to you tonight um, on the EAP program. Each year, we get more and more people who are interested in the program, and that is our goal, because we want to keep our HIDA students here at the School of Medicine. So on behalf of the admissions program and the dean of the School of Medicine, welcome. Welcome to UCR School of Medicine, and I hope you have um, all of the questions and um, concerns that you have tonight answered. Next slide, please. So we don't do anything at the School of Medicine without first starting with our mission. And our mission is very, very clear and succinct. And that is we want to expand the workforce and have a diverse workforce for inland Southern California. And we also want to produce doctors who are trained in culturally humble care so that they can provide care, preventive medicine, public health care, and health education to the people who are living and working in inland Southern California. We want to create residency programs to train um, doctors in areas that we consider the short specialty areas. And they are actually eight because we added emergency medicine, but the main ones, the original ones are family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, general surgery, as well as psychiatry. Now we are light on all specialties, but those are the ones that really, really are needed in inland Southern California. And the ultimate goal is to improve the health of the community we serve. We are a community-based medical school, community-based, regionally focused, and that's the goal of what we do at UCR School of Medicine. Next slide. So tonight you came here to hear about the Early Assurance Program. And our Early Assurance Program, the, the um, formal name of it is the UCR School of Medicine, Thomas Haida Early Assurance Program. And this is a program that is very unique to UCR School of Medicine. And you can only get into that by applying through the EAP program. You do not do that through going through the MCAS program. It's a very special, unique program. And our goal, our intent is to identify students from UCR undergraduate um, um, institution before they apply or before you apply to the general application pool. So we don't want you to go through the MCAS. We don't want you to spend the money to interview all over the country or to pay for all these application fees. We want to take you off the market, if you will, and have you committed to UCR School of Medicine before you have to um, expend all of that extra time and money. So typically we have about eight to 10. Don't hold us to that number because it changes each year, but typically we have about eight to 10 applicants each year. And we set aside at least 24 seats for students who have spent at least six consecutive quarters at UCR undergraduate program. Next slide. So our goal, as I said, is to attract the very best. We want the very best to stay here at the School of Medicine. What we've accomplished in the past is that those students who um, have strong science backgrounds. Our average um, um, BCPM GPA has been around 3.81. We want students who have um, had some experience in a clinical setting. That's very important because we want to know that you really do want medicine and not something else. There are many ways that you can serve inland Southern California and medicine is not the only way. We want to see that you have a commitment to service as evidenced by what you've done um, before you come to medical school. And it's really important, it goes back to our mission, that you desire to practice in inland Southern California. Next slide. So there are several prerequisites. Um, um, well, okay. So the questions that we want and any admissions committee want to see are number one, can a student successfully complete all of the requirements of medical school? 
That means all of them. We have something called technical standards. So that means that you should be able to think. Um, obviously, you have to have the academic abilities, but you also have to have the physical abilities and the emotional abilities and the technical abilities to complete medical school training. So that's the first thing that admissions committees want to know. The other thing is, do you have character traits? You know, anyone can learn the the requirements that the 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 um, academic requirements that are needed to become a doctor. But we also want doctors who are humanistic and who are empathic and who are caring. So we want that because we can make a doctor, but you can't make the character of the doctor. So you we need to know that those traits are there before they come in. And the last thing is, are they mission fit? Do they fit in with the, 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 thing, the thing that you have for your particular medical school? And our mission fit is, are you willing to serve inland Southern California in a way that is um, culturally humble? So the prerequisites for medical school, as you know, you can look on our website and um, see those. The same as most medical schools and certainly all of the medical schools in California. We expect for you to have 12 quarter hours of both math, physics, and biology. And labs are optional and 24 um, quarters of chemistry. And that includes general chemistry, organic, as well as biochemistry. Next slide, please. All right, so obviously, in order to be a holistic physician, you have to have something more than just that BCPM or the basic sciences. So we want humanities. Humanities are extremely important to us. As a matter of fact, you do not have to be a science major in order to get into medical school, ours nor anyone else's. So we do want you to have um, 12 quarters of English, writing, composition, or critical thinking as well as humanities. And we would like for you, I mean, this is not a requisite, but it is recommended, highly recommended that you have some Spanish um, background because the majority of our um, population has um, Spanish ancestry. So we definitely would like um, our students to be able to communicate in a language that many of our patients also communicate in um, primarily. Next slide, please. So most students who are admitted to medical school have an average GPA around 3.73. However, most medical schools don't just look at your total GPA, we look at your science GPA, your basic science GPA, GPA which is that BCPM that I'm talking about, biology, chemistry, physics, um, 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 and math, the, the, the GPA from there. So when we look at our Haida pool, and Haida simply means anyone who has attended UCR for those six consecutive um, quarters, when we look at our regular height of pool for students who are admitted to UCR School of Medicine, their GPA is around a 368. But for EAP, the special portal, the GPA is 381. So as we said, we expect a higher, we expect a higher GPA and higher metrics for our early assurance program students. Next slide. So every school, every medical school has graduation competencies. And our graduation competencies are the same as the competencies that residency programs want. So once you graduate from medical school, you attend a residency program. And this is what residency programs want. So our competencies directly um, correlate with the competencies for residency. And those are knowledge for practice, patient care, interpersonal and communication skills. Professionalism is extremely important. Practice-based learning and improvement, system-based practice, as well as collaboration with people who are not physicians. So interprofessional nurses, um, PAs, um, medical technicians, as well as a continuing um, commitment to personal and professional development. Next slide. 
We also have core personal competencies. We really want people who are um, ethical and dependable, um, adaptable, resilient, always looking to improve, and competencies that are needed to be an effective doctor. So teamwork, being able to um, communicate well orally, having those social and interpersonal skills that are needed to be a doctor, and caring for others. Next slide, please. So what does it take to get into the School of Medicine? The mission, as I said, was extremely important. How do we look at if you are mission fit, if we don't just look at the ladder as a recommendation or your GPA or what you um, scored on your MCAT um, test? We also look at the extracurricular activities and we strongly look at those. So we look at what clinical experiences have you done? You do not have to have a clinical experience with a physician. I know it's really difficult now with COVID um, to get um, clinical internships for many of you. So we want to see what you have done. It might be a virtual experience. It might be that you're working at a nursing home, but we want to see that you're able to be around people who are sick, who might not um, be in the best of health, who might have um, um, malodor or who might have um, things that are considered not as, um, as um, pleasant as, as you would if you're in a classroom. So we wanna be able that you can, we want to see that you are able to be around blood guts and, um, and, and dying patients. Community service is also extremely important. How do you care for other people? How do we know that you care for other people? It's by your volunteerism, your volunteerism with, with um, organizations in the community that help others. So it doesn't have to be all medical. You can volunteer with schools. You can volunteer with, um, um, I, I can't think of anything else, but I mean, you can volunteer with anything, churches, um, um, community organizations, doesn't matter. We just wanna see that you care for someone other than yourself. Leadership is extremely important. We wanna see that you can both lead and be a servant leader so you can follow. Professional development, we wanna see that you're constantly willing to do to improve yourself by going to um, conferences and participating in writing groups or writing papers, publications, abstracts, presenting, those are extremely important also. And many students are not able to do as many extracurricular activities because they have to work in order to support themselves or their families. So that also counts um, as leadership, it counts as community experience. So that also um, is very important and is something that we look at when we look at your application for the School of Medicine. Next slide. Attendance seminars or conferences that, um, you know, that teach you more about the medical profession. Also reading articles that make you more aware of the medical profession and understanding health disparities. It is important that you know how to network with others who are both within and outside of the medical field. And time management, as most medical students will tell you, is a must because there is a tremendous amount of material that must be learned in a very short period of time. And it is really important, I would really behove you to work on your time management skills while you're an undergraduate and not wait until you become a medical student. So you wanna try to get those skills under, um, under wrap as an undergraduate student. Next slide, please. All right, so what do you expect in a medical school interview? So what we want to see is that, again, you see the same things coming um, forward. We want to see that you have good communication skills as well as problem solving skills. You're able to solve a, a dilemma that's 
put forth to you in a very short period of time. That's what doctors do for a living. We want to see that you're professional, that you are a leader, and that you fit into the values and the mission for the School of Medicine. Next slide. So we talked about what the three questions that admissions committee members want to see. Can you complete the requirements of medical school? Do you have the character traits to be a good doctor? Are you mission fit? That's important. That's why I said it twice. If you see it twice, that's very important. Next. So what are the criteria for the early assurance program? The first is you have to have four quarters. Now, remember I said six quarters for regular HIDA students to be considered a HIDA student. But for EAP, because you're typically earlier in the course of your um, undergraduate trajectory, you must have four quarters. So if you have two, we won't consider you. If you have three, we won't consider you. You must have four prior to applying to this program. And you must have six by the time you are admitted into medical school. You must be within one year of graduation. So if you graduated in 2021, then you can apply, but no more after then. If you graduate in 2020, you're too, you're too far um, removed from being part of the EAP program. You would have to apply in the regular HIDA program. You must have a BCPM of 3.4. That is a requirement. You must have a BCPM of 3.4. You have community service experience. You have clinical experience. You must definitely show and express your commitment to practice here in Inland Southern California and no place else. And you must commit to enroll in UCR School of Medicine, which means you cannot apply to any other school. So once you apply to Early Assurance Program, you must not apply to any other school until you have gotten the um, response back from the either the negative or the um, positive affirmation that you have been accepted into the School of Medicine. Next slide, please. So just a little history on what students have looked like in our previous EAP cohorts as well as our um, HIDA cohort to compare the two. Last year, we had 79 applications for the EAP program compared to 302 for our HIDA program. Each year it increases. We interviewed 24 for the EAP program compared to 49 for the HIDA program. We accepted 13. So like I said, eight to 10, we the students were so competitive that we actually accepted 13 um, and 29 for the HIDER program. 13, we accepted 13 and 13 will enter into the um, class um, next year for 2022. Um, 14 for the um, HIDER program, that plus the 12 um, from the EAP, so the 26 total. Um, the average BCPM we already talked about earlier and the average MCAT for the regular HIDA students was um, 510.5. And the average MCAT for the um, EAP students is really a misnomer because students do not have to take um, the MCAT to be an EAP program. And only a few students actually took the MCAT for our M, uh, for the EAP program. If you take it, we will look at it. If you don't, we don't look at it. Next slide, please. So um, if you are an out-of-state student, you cannot apply. You must be an in-state student. And it is not an accelerated program. It is not an advanced program. All students who are admitted into the EAP program must complete your bachelor's degree before matriculation. You must complete your bachelor's degree with a 3.4 BCPM GPA. Next slide, please. Okay, so what do you need to do to apply to um, the EAP program? You have to do the 
Early Assurance Program application. We need one copy of your um, academic transcript and three letters of recommendation. Three letters of recommendation, but a maximum of five. We don't wanna see more than five letters of recommendation. And a photo, a picture of yourself. Now, for next year, our deadline is April the 1st. Not, don't, it's not an April Fool's joke. Our deadline is April the 1st at noon. We will not accept any applications at 1201. So we urge you to start working on your application early and have it ready and submit it before um, the deadline of April the 1st. Next slide, please. So once you submit that application, we do have a special committee that looks only at applications that come from UCR's undergraduate campus. We will um, do interviews and those interviews will happen in May. So you submit the application in April, we will have the interviews in May and we will send you the notification of acceptance or our notifications by the end of May. So we've been able to keep to that um, May deadline in the, in the past. So you have to do a letter of commitment and you must send us a plan every quarter to let us know what you're doing in your um, gap year um, when you're waiting for admission to medical school. We don't expect you to get into the EAP program and to stop um, doing well in school. We want you to do things that, um, that excite you. So yes, you're still in school or you might have the gap year. We want you to do things that you um, have always wanted to do that excites you. And you don't have to spend the year applying for medical school, traveling, um, making money to apply for um, interviews to get into medical school. So we want to know what you're doing in that gap year um, in, while you're waiting to get into medical school um, once you're accepted into the EAP program. So if we, you sign a contract once you get into the EAP program, saying that you will not apply to other medical schools. That is very, very important. Um, so if you do apply to another medical school, then that contract that you sign for the EAP program is null and void. Once you apply to the EAP program, you still are eligible for all of the scholarships that all students, whether through the HIDA program or outside of the HIDA program are eligible for um, to apply at the School of Medicine. Next slide. So why apply to the Early Assurance Program? Hopefully I've explained to you that, you know, number one, you don't have to go into the general pool and apply for medical school. You have a guaranteed seat in the School of Medicine. So you can just relax and enjoy your, your, your um, year are your two years in which you are applying when you would apply to medical school. So you have time to focus on what you want to do, what excites you to prepare you better for medical school. You don't have to spend time or money studying for the medical college admissions test. And most importantly, you can save a lot of time and money on applications um, for medical school. Next slide. So there are some disadvantages. Obviously everything has two sides to every story, right? So the disadvantage is you can put in a lot of time and effort for this application because it is a separate application from the MCAS application. So you, you, know, you have to spend um, time getting the transcripts, getting a letters of recommendation, and it's a totally separate application. So you could have been studying for your MCAT to improve your scores on your MCAT, or you could be studying to get a better GPA. And obviously no one wants to see a letter of, re of rejection, but that, that unfortunately can happen 
either for this program or any other program. So those are the disadvantages. But all in all, the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages for applying to the Early Assurance Program. Next slide. So typically we have um, questions. And so we've put some of those questions, some of those frequently asked questions on this slide. The first one is, can you apply to both EAP and Thomas Hyder? Yeah, you can, but not in the same application period. You must apply for EAP first, get the decision before you apply um, through the MCAS um, portal. But many students absolutely do that. We have three times that you can apply to the School of Medicine. Typically, if you go through the regular portal or the Hyder portal, this does not count because this is a special program. So does this count? Does the EAP count towards your three maximum applications? The answer is no. If you apply to EAP program and you're not accepted, does that hurt your chances of getting into the regular um, medical school program? Absolutely not. It does not help. Actually, it may actually help. Um, but we ask you not to apply for this program if you do not meet the metrics that we identify, the GPA metrics, the time metrics. Please do not apply if you do not meet those metrics. Next slide, please. So we will post the information next month on on how to apply for the EAP. So the applications will be available starting December 1st. The deadline, as I said, is on April Fool's Day, noon, noon, strong cutout. We strongly advise you, if you do decide to apply for EAP, to do it in collaboration with one of the three people on this slide. So the director of HPAC and the assistant director of HPAC, Mr. Struggs and Ms. Nicholson, or Ms. Teresa Cofield, if you are in one of her um, uh, pathway programs. So if you are not in one of those programs, then reach out directly to Erin Hurd, who can um, assist you. But we do ask that you talk to someone before you apply to the EAP program, number one, to determine your eligibility, and number two, to just get the um, details and um, to make your application process a little more pleasant for you. 